Hi Dharma, Jay, Shelly, Roberto, and anyone else that might be watching this. This is Brian, and it's my pleasure to show you what I've been up to. Hopefully you like the design. I'm going to start with uh, what you have now, which you're already familiar with, of course, but I think it's a good place to start. And then I'm going to do a video walkthrough of what I have so far, which is a work in progress. But it's a good point, I think, to get some feedback and show you where I am. And then also, I'm going to go through some of the specifications for things that I've chosen and hopefully get some feedback from you. And we can speak on the phone and meet soon, but I do want to keep my word and get something to you before the end of the week. So let's dive right into it. And this is just a screen capture video. Uh, so I do apologize for all the back and forth, but like I said, I want to get this to you right away. So what you have now and boom, what I'm proposing uh, as your, your new River of Life home. And you'll see I haven't quite done the entry as far as the drive and our walkway because I do want to work with Roberto for the strategy for that if we have the parking uh, across and off to the side so that the vehicles are away, golf carts, and possibly a pedestrian path with some nice landscaping. Uh, but I do want to look to his creativity and leadership on that because I think we can create a great experience leading to the building. Now if you see, I have all the glass doors and windows, all the new uh, openings being placed. And then also I'm proposing that it's white stucco around. I'm not sure if the exterior finish has been discussed and what was in the budget, but I think a simple, clean, crisp white stucco will look great, especially with the white frame windows and doors. And as Shelly and I discussed, changing the overhang uh, supports that are there to three from the four. And you can see I'm making up for the elevation change by having uh, entry steps that welcome you from every angle. And I think it's a nice opportunity to put some plants, you know, plastic little chairs, but use it as a front porch, as a gathering space um, at the front of the home. And I'm showing coral stone as far as the finish. Of course, you could do concrete or other options. I love you in using coral stone because it's a native material. And of course, you've seen it. You have it on your property now. So let's go ahead and walk in. So go up the entry steps. You can also see I'm putting new light fixtures. And this is the frosted entry door. You come into the space. And you have the sitting area, lounge area, off to the right, to a nice cozy spot. To get an idea of scale, this TV is about 50 inches. So I just want to emphasize that because the software for the walkthrough does uh, change the perspective a, a bit as far as your field of view and I want to give the proper perspective so this is a 50 inch diagonal TV and like I said I'll go through the specifications of what I have in here and what is specific that I'm suggesting and what are placeholders for space planning but uh, in this space just about everything is a specific recommendation so this is a couch from Soho Concept. What I like about it, with the curved uh, features and the legs that stick up. So keep it nice and clean by easily vacuuming under there. It also sits low so it doesn't block your view. And with the curves, you of course can have multiple people sitting on this, but also they can sit on the side, you can walk around it without hitting your hips on the corners. Um, so I think it works well in the space. And this coffee table, as well as these two chairs, are also from the same company, uh, Soho. And these are the Luna chairs, so it looks kind of like a half moon. And you can get these finished in a leatherette or other, um, other finishes. And this rug is from Crate and Barrel. What I like about Crate and Barrel's rugs is they're durable and uh, relatively affordable when it comes to rugs. Similarly with Soho Concept, the reason I've suggested their furniture, the main reason is that I think you get a great value uh, when you buy their stuff. It's better than what you'll get in just a retail store and it's less expensive. They're direct to the trade. 
can buy them through me, you can buy them through someone else, um, but uh, you can get a good price on them and they're good quality. So that is the sitting area, with the sliding glass doors right here. And I'm keeping the wall uh, fairly open. I think it'll be nice and clean, leading to the feature, which is I know Dharma said she wanted a modern bookcase. And as I was designing it, what felt right was this design, which is you have the, uh, the flooring with the wood look, the dark and the light. And I'm sort of taking advantage of that and making the space feel open by having the open book cases. It's not your typical modern, um, I'll say, just box kind of look, but it's more of a uh, mid-century modern design or eco-chic kind of uh, design, and that is you have the darker wood for the vertical pieces that can just be doweled into the wall and then these horizontal pieces and the lighter wood, maybe like a walnut and an oak veneer, um, which I believe Shelley's cabinetry person could build, uh, or if you want, I can suggest people that can do it. But it's just very simple and straightforward. Uh, it's an honest design, which is what I, what I love about it. I hope you like it. You can put books, you know, all sorts of knickknacks, anything that you want on the shelves, and it's real nice and open. I think you can have materials on here um, you know, that the community can grab and then they can go and sit at this table. Now, I'm proposing a live edge table and what I like about the live edge is, well, one thing it looks beautiful, but also the gentleman who works on them happens to be in Homestead and that also I can put you directly in touch, get a great price on. The one thing I will mention with the natural live edge tables is they do require regular maintenance, just oiling, to keeping them fresh and new, clean them with, uh, with soap and water, and wood soap and water, and then oil them uh, as far as, I think it's every six months or so, just to keep them fresh uh, and not cracking, and things like that. There are, of course, other wood tables you can use um, if, as far as like a butcher block type look, or a synthetic wood, I'll say, uh, but I do believe the live edge would look beautiful in here, and that's what this is representing. And I'll show you images also. I was already in touch uh, with my contact that sources those, and he has a base that's readily available that I think will look beautiful in the space. And these are the chairs I'm proposing. Those are also from Soho, so you can make the finishes match exactly. And they're nice and open and simple, and I think this is a good space. Uh, you can fit 10 right here and you can use it to study um, you know for just a simple gathering and eating and I think that becomes the main space that people will use uh, for productivity and then of course you have a little um, sitting area for the TV so I think it creates a nice uh, gathering space and I will go ahead straight through and what I will show you here is you can see rather than just having typical drywall around or uh, corner guards or vinyl edges, things to protect the corners of those walls, I'm proposing that we band that, uh, I'll call it a, a portal, in glass tile. And I think it celebrates it. It doesn't fight it as another space, but it creates a, a nice modern look and it makes you really feel like you are going into a new area. So the space in here, you know, is a little more formal. And then you come through the space and this is your relax zone. So what I'm proposing in here, and of course tell me if this is what you want, if you like it or not. Um, this is another rug from Crate and Barrel. But I'm proposing a rug in this space with floor seating and by that I'm showing pillows in here these are just examples um, and I'll show you several different options but you can of course use pillows or um, beanbag type products there are a ton of them on the market now ottomans but basically a place where you can sit on the floor lie on the floor hang out uh, which for some reason isn't very common in this country but uh, is of course common all around the world and I, I personally love 
lying on the floor, sitting on the floor, especially playing with my, my dogs or you know kids, and it's a relaxed environment. I notice in your home uh, now that you do have the rugs and the pillows uh, for uh, for this type of setting. So I think it gives you the variety of being on the couch and lounge chairs or in upright chairs at the dining table or uh, on the floor lounging in here. So that's what I have in this space. Those are those sliding glass doors and of course the new door out. And you will see, and I'll point out to Shelly, the lighting uh, everywhere. So what I am proposing for, through, for throughout the space are these recessed can fixtures. It's very simple. Uh, I'm proposing the square ones as opposed to round ones. And the reason I'm doing that is I think it just gives more of a modern, updated feeling. Um, and dimmable, of course. Likely around 3000 Kelvin, which is the slightly warmer uh, lighting. And of course, sent a long email about color temperatures for lighting. You have a lot of options. But being that this is, I'll say, a guest home or a community type home, I think having the flexibility of just the overhead lighting will work well. So throughout the rooms, that's how I have the lighting laid out. And it also gives you flexibility if for whatever reason you need to move things around in the future. Um, you aren't tied. For example, if you had a hanging light fixture or pendant above the dining table, then you always have to have a table there or you would have to uninstall it and patch and repair the ceiling. And I think that just having this lighting will be nice and gives you the flexibility and is calming and soothing and not in the way. Now the other thing I will point out as far as this tile uh, in the, the portal, creating the portal through the space, is that's a motif that I've carried through the entire home just in very select areas. Uh, so I do hope you like it because it's kind of a, a grand but understated move. And part of my thinking with that is it is the river of life home serendipitously. And in my view, the river is you know represented by water, the pool in the back. And I was thinking you could have a nice uh, coping with the tile around that and then carry that through. So that kind of keeps that thread of the river of life throughout the home and tells a story while being special and unique. Now let's go into this bathroom so you can see what I mean by that. And so of course I need to put in plumbing fixtures, but uh, I want to show you. So I've carried the flooring through into the bathroom and in all the bathrooms I'm showing a wall mounted vanity and this can either be purchased this is a uh, Duravit product is what I've shown throughout or you can have them built and being that this is a guest home um, I, I think it would look well it keeps it nice and open because these spaces are relatively small and so by having it open at the bottom it makes it feel bigger and this is a rift cut oak veneer with just a, a white solid surface top and in many of the bathrooms I am proposing a mirrored medicine cabinet in this space with the exterior wall. Uh, of course, it would have to be surface mounted, but in the other rooms where you have interior walls, I'm suggesting that they be recessed into the wall so it gives you extra storage. And then I'm using the same overhead lighting fixture, a vanity light fixture in all the bathrooms. So the basic lighting in the bathrooms is to have one light above the vanity and then the same recessed cans throughout. So it gives you a nice clean and simple feeling and this I'll show you from the kitchen but you can see the banding that I'm carrying through. My suggestion here, which I'll, again I'll show you in the kitchen, is to take advantage of that existing window opening and put in a stained glass window. This is an actual product that I found online of course, you could get something that is more meaningful to you uh, from you know, any uh, artist or you can look online for something in particular that you want. But my thought is that it takes advantage of that opening and gets a, a nice little art piece and pass through light. And again, it doesn't fight the fact that this second half is you know, evidently 
an addition that was a Florida room that was enclosed. It embraces it, and I think it feels natural because, again, you're honest about what it is. And you can see here I have the glass tile. Now, I have used different uh, tiles and different spaces to give some variety. If you wanted to use the same one throughout, of course, that makes complete sense because um, then you can just order one in particular. But I did want to give it a little variety uh, to give it some interest. So it's the same design concept and same motif carried through, but with different tiles, different colors in different places. It's an iridescent glass tile that I'm suggesting. It gives a little pizzazz, something special. And you'll also notice in this bathroom that these walls uh, are, I'll call it a mint color, and have a specific specification for that. But basically it's a real light teal kind of color. And I think it gives it some visual interest as opposed to just being uh, stark or white. And speaking of that, and I apologize that this is how the graphics come out, but basically it's a mosaic tile, so of course you wouldn't see those squares. Um, but what you see here is a basic white tile uh, for forming the showers and the curb, and then that mosaic forming those window sills and on the floor in the shower. And then this is a simple modern toilet, again, this toilet and the bandana from Duravit, but there are tons of options out there. And then you have the glass doors. And again, I need to put the plumbing fixtures in. Um, hopefully this suffices for now, it gives you a good idea. You'll have, of course, the shower on this wall. And it just is nice and, and simple. It doesn't fight what it is. So you have the tile stopping at the shower edge and the different color. So it's uh, very straightforward and I think it creates a nice nice contemporary feeling. And as I mentioned with the colors, what I've tried to do throughout the space or what I've done is that all of the finishes you'll notice are natural colors. They're things you would regularly see uh, throughout South Florida in nature. So you have wood and you have greens and blues and there, there's some uh, metal, you know, again, it is, it is natural, but for the most part, it's a very um, natural, eco-friendly design, and the color scheme is that, so it doesn't detract from the beauty on, on your site and the landscaping and everything else that uh, I'm sure will develop. So let's go through here. Now in the bedrooms, I've put placeholders, so I want to be straightforward about that. Um, so, not these actual bunk beds, uh, but I do want to show the layout that I come up with, which is for two bunk beds against this wall, another two on that wall, and then two more on this wall. So you can fit six adults in this room. And there are options, I'll show you as far as the bunk beds. There are also some bunk beds that have trendle beds underneath where you could pull out even another bed from them. Um, but I want to discuss this with you as far as what you want to accomplish in these rooms. If you would like a desk or two in here or dressers um, or just space for people if you want to open where people can put their luggage in. But very basically three bunk beds, six people nice and open and again the lighting is just equally spaced so that if you wanted to change stuff later you could um, and it gives you gives you that flexibility the closets in here and these doors are I'll say the white painted shaker doors I know it seems a little flat in here but that's basically why you see a panel on panel, um, but I'm just suggesting very simple white and then we'll have the high white baseboards throughout. And so we'll go into this other bedroom and the layout in here, again this isn't specific furniture, uh, but it's giving you the large bed. And the reason I placed the bed against this wall under the window as opposed to on this wall you enter is that you have space 
for a nightstand on each side and then you still have your closet so you have the bed, the nightstands, sliding glass doors out and then a little sitting seating area, a little couch in there still you have room and I don't know if you want TVs in the rooms or not or um, uh, other cabinetry but you do have some space here or you can just leave it open there's no need to clutter it if you do not need it and again the lighting is just simple give you a nice uh, feeling in there and I'm imagining for the window coverings we could have roll down shades which is you know, modern and typical if you wanted something else we could do that too uh, but I'm imagining those shades being up most of the time and you do have the eave that overhangs on the outside so you don't get too much direct sunlight uh, and then you have your closet from that side the new wall that comes through and this is going into the other bathroom and again here the flooring has uh, continued through you have the wall mounted vanity toilet and then a large mirrored medicine cabinet the vanity light and the recessed lights and of course you will have air conditioning the vents uh, which is the next item I need to add you have the closet in here from this side and again with this tile so this is a uh, different color like I mentioned but it's the same idea and this is your uh, door out to the patio so it becomes a cabana bath and if I can zoom in I just want to show you so this color you can see in, because it's taken from a photo you don't get the full effect but it's a continuous mosaic you wouldn't see these squares and it's just simple white uh, ceramic white porcelain tile and then the mosaic and the mosaic wrapping around a niche so that again I think it's just a very elegant simple move uh, that goes well with everything and it gives it a, you know, a touch of class without being extravagant and the bathroom again is uh, painted differently than the white communal space so the walls have that light green light teal kind of color and you have the white ceiling so let me know what you think of this I am showing I'll say a subway uh, size tile around for the white with the mosaic inset and what Shelly might care about is I am thinking of the white Schluter edges, just the vinyl edges being used at all these, you have a nice clean edge. So we'll go back through, coming through that space, through the communal space, and of course in here you can have artwork on the walls, um, you could have a little table stand with a place to set things. This hopefully gives you an idea of what I'm proposing, what I'm thinking would be uh, good in the space. And I will go in this other room before going into the kitchen and the apartment. So again, the bedrooms, I still need to model the actual furniture, but this is giving the layout, the proposed layout. So in here you have the two queen beds, and they would have to be against the wall in order to fit in here. And you can have one piece of furniture in the middle. It's like a shared nightstand, shared dresser with the two queen beds. Same type of lighting, equally spaced throughout. And then the couch with a uh, sofa bed that could come out. So you can have another person in the space also. And this is the walk-in closet. So in here I'm showing two rows and then the one that carries to the side so you could have long dresses, long coats, put luggage you know, in that corner. So just shelves with the hanging rods. 
And then we'll go in this other bathroom. And it's the same concept, keeping it simple and neat and clean. Uh, there are two sizes, as you'll see, one is larger, one is smaller as far as that vanity mirror go, vanity light goes, and same with the wall hung vanities. And here you could have the recessed medicine cabinet, the mirrored medicine cabinet. So you have the vanity lights, the overhead lights, you have the flooring that continues, and the toilet with the small curb and the inset. And you'll see this tile, just a little bit different. This one is called a rainbow one, has a little bit more variety. And again, just wrapping that niche, little accent. So, of course, a glass tile, um, or I should say, of course, but a glass tile, an iridescent type tile, is more expensive than just a plain tile, um, which is why I'm proposing it being used limitedly. But it, it gives it that little punch and carries the story um, through the space, which just something that I think would be nice, kind of the, the essence of the space. And eco-chic, modern design with meaning. So we're back in the communal space. That, of course, is the air conditioning closet. And let's go into the kitchen. So in the main kitchen, taking advantage of what is already there, and I'm proposing these contemporary cabinets with, I'll call it a sea foam, uh, but it is uh, a Wilson Art laminate product. Uh, I know Shelly mentioned from Mica, so that's basically what this is. And you can have these made. So in the quartz countertop, it's a sile stone product. And I think it gives it just that, that little touch of, uh, of color without being overbearing. So stainless steel products, those laminates, and I'm showing a finger pull um, so that you would open these lower doors, the lower cabinet doors, and the drawers from right around here from that little finger pull. And I've done that before. I'll show you an example. It keeps it nice and clean, and that way you don't have handles sticking out that you could hit yourself on, um, you know, run into, snag clothing, anything like that. If you wanted pools, of course, we could do that. Uh, but this is simple to do. I think it would look very nice. And it's just drawers on top with doors below. And let's go ahead and go inside. Upper cabinets. One of the things I do want to ask about this space is if you plan to have a microwave in here. I have some clients that do use microwaves, some that don't. Um, but you could put one on the counter right here. So I did lose space for that. So you have the uppers on this side, the sink. And this is where I'm proposing we take advantage of the existing wall opening, just framing it in some more, and putting the stained glass in there so that you can't see through, uh, but you get a nice glow, a nice color. It's like a little piece of art above the ceiling. And again, embracing what is there and, and using it. So if you like a farmhouse sink, that's what I'm proposing. It doesn't have to be, but a big kitchen sink dishwasher and this I am thinking as your appliance garage and by that I mean you open these doors and you'll have shelving spaced apart so that you could put a coffee maker or blender and uh, other things like that toaster oven stored in here so you have you know three shelves where you can keep your appliances so other than possibly a microwave Nothing is cluttering the countertop space. Uh, on this side are the French doors for the refrigerator. I'm suggesting that so that you don't have a big door that gets in the way of the space. You know, this takes up less space. You can stand in front of it. And over here, uh, the oven with range, uh, oven with cooktop. And what I am suggesting, and this is, you know, I'll say a, a little luxury touch, but I'm suggesting we use that same style stone solid surface around the hood and take that all the way up so it creates uh, a really cool contemporary feeling 
Um, you could, of course, have a stainless steel hood or something else. You could continue the cabinetry, but I feel like this um, will, will feel much better in the space. It's light and airy and clean, and it kind of juxtaposes those forms, if you see. So you have your upper cabinets, and I have the upper cabinet stopping at around seven feet. It's kind of a, a typical cabinetry. And then the hood that goes all the way up so that the vent and the ductwork can be in there. And you'll see, so this solid surface comes up and then stops. And then this would be your pantry. The reason I'm suggesting the pantry on this side and then the appliance garage over here is that it keeps the food away from this door uh, that's right behind where we're standing now and uh, hopefully keep pests and rats other things away and also it's convenient for accessing. So that is what I proposed for the kitchen. And of course you can see here using that solid surface for the backsplash up until the upper cabinets. And I'll, I'll share this spec, the specification for this style stone. What I'm proposing is called White Storm. It's basically white, but it has little flecks in it um, that kind of look like a little brown, a little tan that pick up on the flooring design. So we'll go out this door and I will show you the laundry room. So you have your water heater and other components on this side. And then on the other side, you have your utility sink and cabinetry and the washer and dryer. I'm showing a countertop above. You don't have to have this. Um, one thing I will mention is if we do build this, please uh, be sure that these are taken out regularly and then dusted on top. Or someone takes a wand and dusts on top because otherwise that is a space for dust to collect. Uh, but this way, it will give you a surface for ironing, for folding, that's usable. And I'm showing in here the same kind of oak veneer. Just, it gives a, a nice warm touch. It goes well with the floors, and by having, it's a rift cut, so that's that pattern, that horizontal pattern. And I think it makes the space feel bigger, gives it some movement. So one of the things I will mention in here is depending on the exact spacing, ideally I'd like for these lines to align, the cabinets to align. When I was laying it out, it seemed like it might be a little off, which is okay because it's a laundry room. But once we get the final dimensions, that is once Shelly builds out these walls, because right now it's just concrete, we'll need to put insulation and drywall on it. We can see exactly where it lays and field verify the dimensions before the cabinetry is built. So that is the laundry room. And then we'll go into the apartment through the kitchen. In this kitchen, you have the refrigerator freezer. And of course, you get any appliance you want. Uh, what I'm showing in here is the example of the ones that have the glass doors. And the reason I am suggesting that is because the space is very small. And that will make it feel a little bit bigger. Just gives you something to see through as opposed to a solid surface. And then you have your cooktop, your range, and oven. And what I'm showing here, and of course there are options with this again. But I'm showing the microwave with vent. Um, it's what's often used in apartments, and being that this is kind of like an apartment, I think it would be nice. The cabinetry that you can use above, and this is the rift cut oak veneer. The same style stone countertop, sink, and cabinetry below. And then I've carried through, uh, this is one of the few spaces I've done this, but I've carried through the tile surround wrap. It just gives it a little punch because, again, the space is very tiny. And I think it gives it some visual interest. And if you wanted, uh, could possibly mount something on this wall for extra storage or shelves on this wall. 
depending on how much it's going to be used and how much storage space they need. And the lighting, of course, I'll point out, are just the recessed cans in here. And then this is the apartment. And again, this is for space planning purposes. This is where we talk about having a Murphy bed. So this is how the bed would fold out. Uh, but if you have a Murphy bed on this wall, and you could have some cabinetry on this wall for storage, possibly a little desk in that corner, or a TV uh, that's wall mounted. And then we'll go in this bathroom. So here you can see this one's a little more green. Again, I use a variety of those tiles just to give it some interest. The same idea, um, wrapping that in here with the little pop of color, the white tile, the wall-mounted vanity mirrored medicine cabinet, the vanity light, the painted walls in the bathrooms, and the cam lights. And you can see here, coming out, I do have some steps uh, going up, keeping it nice and simple. And let's go back through the space. One thing I will mention in this kitchen, if you can see, you go around, how the light kind of glows in the corners. I did consider putting LED linear lights up lighting just on the cabinetry tops across and across that would make it glow. Uh, if that's too much, it's not needed. You do have plenty of light. There are three recessed lights in there. But just an idea, uh, if you do want to consider it to give it that little luxury type feeling. Um, it's often in, seen in Miami, Miami Beach hotels, but you don't need it. It's an option. So we're going to go out to the exterior through here. I'm taking that level. So right now there is a step down existing from those doors. And I'm cladding that in the coral stone. Again, just a suggestion. You know, this is a future project, uh, a future development. So a little planting bed against the wall. And then it gives you a lounge space to the side. New pool is about 15 feet by 40 feet, which is a recommended lap pool size. Nice gathering. You do already have the other pool, so if you wanted to change this, of course, uh, it's easy to do. It's just just a design concept. So you come off that apartment, have the step down to the lounge, and then up here. You have the step up, and this is that space, the communal space, to the pool. Oops. And then this furniture, it is real from Catal. These aren't necessarily the finishes that I would pick, but it's something I could throw in to the model to give you a design concept. And I will step off to show you and talk more about it. Whoops, don't want to fall off the earth like that, though. <laughs> These are the limits of your property, uh, as far as the property lines go. So you can see here, this is an area where I'm thinking you could have the covered outdoor seating. That's why I put this here just as a placeholder to show seating. I think you could have, uh, I'll call it a cabana or a trellis, but a covered area right here. And then uncovered area there for lounging or for sit sitting. And this is for sunbathing. And then I'm showing uh, a bed there. You can have bed or seating all around. So that is the general idea. Um, nice pool deck. It's eight feet uh, right there. So it gives you space. I, I hope, I, I think it's not too much, but also not too little. It fits. Uh, design and we'll spin around. Of course here you will have your electrical panel, air conditioning, other equipment, and we'll enclose that uh, either with landscaping 
and or um, some fencing with landscaping. So that is the design, that's what I have so far. I do hope you like it, of course. I, I welcome your feedback and insight, and I'll show you uh, some options. Now let's get into the specifications. Just real quickly, and I can send you the link. So this, for example, is one of the tiles that I have used. It's the same tile throughout, just different colors. So there's that one that I used. That's the other one that I used right here, the peacock. Um, and then this is the other one, the rainbow in the middle bathroom. So again, just some variety. Has a nice iridescent look. And using it sparingly. I mean, you can see it as far as the full swimming pool there, which is really nice. Um, this is the one I use the most. So it gives you the blues and the greens and the browns, yellow, just natural colors. And then the next thing I will show you is this is the paint color that I've uh, shown in the bathrooms. North Shore Green. It's a very light, mint uh, type color. And similarly, this is the surface for the kitchen. The kitchen cabinetry. I'll call it a sea foam or a light mint. And then this is the countertop color. The style stone, as far as the white storm. Again, it's white, just with little flecks uh, inside of it. And this is one of, I'll say, one of their cheapest uh, options. And I think it would look really nice. This is what I'm suggesting for the vanity lights. And with this, you can see it comes in two sizes. One is smaller, one is larger, so that it works well for both the bathrooms and they are installed horizontally. These are examples of them installed vertically, so you can see how it is. But just white and metal, very simple uh, and you know affordable. I'll say for a light fixture. This is another option, just showing you. That I did look at other uh, things. If you did want to use something else, this has more of a chrome finish that you could use. As far as vanity lights go. This one I thought was pretty cool, if you wanted something with a little more uh, design artistic element to it. But again, the other one, simple white one, is what I have shown. This is the basis of design that I'm showing for all of the light fixtures. And it's just a simple uh, four and a half inch square recessed dimmable downlight. And then this is an example of the wall-mounted vanities. The one thing I will mention, which is why you might want to have them made as opposed to ordering it, is that these do not have backsplashes. So it would be ideal, I think, to have a backsplash just as far as water getting onto the wall. Um, but it's not a necessity, but this is showing it's a rift cut oak veneer, the white top, and it is something you can just buy. Uh, I think right now you probably have a couple month lead time, but it's something you can just order. And again, it comes in the different sizes. You have the drawers for storage and the sink. This is the toilet that I'm showing. And you can see it's you know standard size, but relatively shallow. So a nice and modern look. Uh, it, the tank is here so that you don't have to worry about accessing the wall or wall mounting, I believe the plumbing should be getting done soon. So it's just simple, but a modern toilet. And there are other ones, of course. This is just what I'm proposing. For the dining table, uh, this is my buddy Timon, his, his company Duro Designs. And his colleague that is in Homestead is the one that actually takes all the slabs and cuts them and polishes them. And uh, he's done a number of projects for me. And it's really nice work. Um, you know, most of the slabs are imported, oiled, and I will show you just to give you an idea. You know, this is kind of a feel a feeling for not same size, similar size live live edge slab table. And you can see with the bases, there are several options. 
including one that he has in stock right now that he said he would uh, sell for a fraction of the price. I think it's nice and organic would go really well in the space. And then this is showing the chairs, the dining chairs. And I'll show it to you in different colors, but what I am proposing is the white leatherette, which is even understand the chair some. So that is a stock color, and I mentioned that for a reason. This is the sofa, Harmony sofa, and this, for example, also you have the white uh, PPM, which is, I believe, the same as a leatherette. And that one is in stock also. This is showing the coffee table. So nice and simple. Kind of that uh, mid-century modern feeling, natural, organic. And then I wanted to show you this is an example. Uh, I saw this picture, and that's what originally inspired me very admittedly uh, for the open bookcases. I think it looks lovely. Here it's just the same wood. I've, uh, I'll say, developed the idea a little bit with the darker wood and the lighter wood. But so you can see that design idea in the space uh, with the open shelving or the modern bookcase. I know it's likely not what you were thinking, but I hope it's a pleasant surprise as far as the design suggestion. This is the crate and barrel rug that I have in the low lounge area. And then this is the moon lounge, the, uh, the chair that I'm showing, and the TV area. I do want to point out their stock colors are uh, gray wool, red wool, or pistachio wool. If you wanted to have some fun, a little bright, you could do the pistachio, or we can order it in another color. What I'm showing in the model uh, would be a, a custom order, but I do uh, offer those. So I'm showing it in, it's uh, more of a, a light blue, a gray blue, leatherette or PPM finish. And then this is the rug that I'm showing in the TV space. And this is the stained glass that I found online. Again, I think it would be good for you to have something that is right for you if there's something meaningful um, that could go in there, or I think this fits very well in the space. It has the natural colors. And it's fun. This is what I'm showing for the farmhouse sink. faucet and then this is the smaller kitchen sink under mount. And I wanted to show you this is a picture from one of my other projects where I did the finger pools so you get an idea of how that works nice and clean. This is also showing the rift cut oak veneer and then when it comes to the bunk beds I did look at several things Unfortunately, the company that I really like, Urban Green in New York, is closed. Uh, it says temporarily closed. I'm not sure if it's temporary or permanent uh, since COVID, but they were in business a few months ago and now they are not. But I have also used Restoration Hardware and Pottery Barn bunk beds. They are good quality and you, know, you can get a member pricing. I have that uh, with them if you'd like. So here's the trundle bed option where that would pull out from below or you can have it with storage. This Avalon I think is the most modern looking one, or contemporary, um, that would go well in the space, either in white or that wood finish. They do have you know, plenty of other beds. Some start to get a little country feeling. Uh, the Laguna one isn't bad also. So uh, again, just an option as far as the bunk beds and then Pottery Barn is the other one that I mentioned. Pottery Barn, teen is where they sell it. They are for adults uh, as far as the sizes go. And this one, the West Elm, uh, I think looks really nice. And with West Elm, Pottery Barn, all the Williams Sonoma companies, um, I do have a corporate account uh, if you want to where I can get you better pricing.
So just throwing it out there. Uh, and they do have some nicer furniture. And this shows um, an idea, like I was saying, you could have things mounted on the wall in that apartment to save space. So I just wanted to show that. Uh, so you get an idea of what you could do. You have the Murphy bed, and you could also have like a fold-down desk. And then in the uh, lounge space, like I said, you can have regular pillows. This is showing Love Sack, uh, of course, a big company that has those big, cozy uh, pieces. You have all different sizes. Yogi Bo has some also. Soho that I have for the other furniture has these poofs, which are just like that. And I want to show you this in one of my projects where it's a this is shore rugs, but rugs with these big poof pillows, and they're used all the time. So I hope you like that idea for that space. And then speaking of the poofs, I wanted to show you. So they have this outdoor furniture, shore rugs. It's made of silicone. It is a little pricey, but it is really cool. And I uh, just wanted to toss it out there as an idea for the outdoor furniture for the space. And that is uh, all I have for now. Actually, I'll show Shelly real quickly. In blue are all the recessed light fixtures. So I will send a PDF of that um, just to show the layout. So you have the vanity lights and then the recessed lights throughout equally spaced. All right. Well, I hope you are well. I hope this was helpful. And I look forward to your feedback. Thank you.